armors are gone. Taking out the garbage. Wife said I had to do that. Today you get to watch me single-handedly try to install that 36-foot liner into the back of the trailer. An owl or something out here. Let's see if we can find this guy because he's been heard him last night too. I'd like to figure out where his nest sat. His, her, I'm not sexist. Anyways, let's uh Let's go ahead and do this. So last night with the help of my lovely wife, I uh, removed all the uh, cover straps for the uh, liner. Well, I removed all the bolts. There were about a hundred bolts and some screws on the inside behind all the, behind all these build outs here. Uh, the ribs on the side of the trailer, there were screws, but I removed all those. Um, so I'm just gonna pull the cover straps off, get the rest of this stuff out, sweep out the trailer here. And then I'm gonna find a way to prop open this tailgate and uh, roll up that liner and slide it in here. I gotta cut out for the doghouse first, so I gotta get make sure I get all my precise measurements there and uh, kind of go from there. I'm gonna try to figure out if I want that liner to go up those little angles there or if I wanna just cut it around the angle. We'll find out though, so. That actually wasn't all that easy. They had all those cover straps uh, siliconed in there and uh, they were stuck pretty hard. I'm breathing hard trying to pull those suckers off there. So um, as you guys can see probably, and I noticed on the outside of the trailer, um, at one point this trailer had hauled uh, ready mix concrete or uh, well, you know, concrete. Uh, so. Um, I'm assuming that's where all this is. This is still the concrete that used to be in the trailer. Um, and that was hidden underneath the liner. I'm assuming that had gone up the sides of the trailer at some point too. But I'm assuming at some point all the gravel, rock, or whatever they were hauling with the trailer had cleaned all that off the trailer. It's almost too bad that couldn't haul for a little while without the liner just to try to clean some of that up. But it's all gonna be under the liner. It ain't gonna hurt anything. Um, this trailer is going to last me a few years, hopefully, and it's pretty old. It's probably going to be at the end of its life at that point, or it can become a farm trailer, or I don't know, what, whatever happens. So we'll uh, get that taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and sweep all this stuff out. I'm going to try to uh, put a piece of aluminum over the back of this trailer where it was born through the floor there, and then we'll slide that liner in. So I got the, went into town and I welded up those two cracks that I found because um, I don't have a, a uh, aluminum welder. So I welded those up, got the trailer all swept out. I got everything swept down to the end. I'm going to try to back up and sweep that all on the concrete because there's some shavings and some stuff that I don't want to get picked up in tires. I got to scrape all this silicone off yet, re-sweep it out again. Um, my biggest thing is... I got, got to get this measurement around this doghouse. And what I'm concerned about is this doghouse has these angles on it. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to try to score that liner and get all this to follow those angles or not. 
I have a feeling it's gonna be a pain in the ass to do that. Um, so I think I'm just gonna make the liner just match this bottom uh, profile here and then uh, go from there. So I just don't think I, once I start trying to do all this stuff, it's gonna end up um, really screwing with me. Plus there's not a lot of, not a ton of material that comes up here. Um, and once in a while, I don't care who you are, if you ever run a dump truck, you're gonna have to get up there and scrape some stuff out of the corners anyways. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna think on it a little bit here, try to figure out what I'm gonna do. Other than that, I got a couple more screws I gotta dig out here. A couple old ones here where the old liner was. And there's a couple in the floor up here. I gotta try to un either unscrew or uh, cut off with the grinder. Scrape off all this uh, gunk here and then uh, start laying out my liner and cutting it. I think I'm gonna get that thing unloaded. Start rolling that out so that thing can flatten out a little bit. And we'll uh, start measuring. Okay, so I got the uh, liner all unloaded. The problem is these scores that they put in, you're supposed to put those up. I would have actually thought it would have been the opposite way that those would have been down so you don't get any material stuck in there or anything like that. But when you fold the sides up, it pinches all these clothes so material is not supposed to go in there. And I'm assuming it's probably stronger that way. That way you're not wearing on the the uh, back side of them where it's the thinnest um, and that way it won't break. Um, but I wish I would have rolled it up the other way because if they would have done that, it would have unrolled and been right side up. But now when it unrolls, it's going to be upside down. So I'm going to have to flip it no matter what. It doesn't matter which direction I put it, it's still going to be upside down. So, so I'm going to unroll it here. I have my trucks in the way, so I really should, uh, actually I'm going to flip this thing or turn this thing around and unroll it backwards. What I've got is these straps laid out here. So when it unrolls, I can, I can roll the straps together and uh, um, pinch the sides up and we can slide it right back into the uh, back of the trailer. If I was thinking, I probably would have uh, put this in before the uh, roll tarp went in. That way I could have just taken the end gate out and slid it in right over the top of the trailer. But this will work too. It might just be a little more work, but we'll get it all uh, turned around, flipped over. Okay, now that it's flipped upside down, <laughs> since it's 36 feet long, I can't really get a good edge on it to flip it over. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to drag it out, clamp onto that end, and just start literally dragging it, unfolding it backwards, I think, to get it back upside right. So that's what we're gonna try to do. I knew when I welded this chain to this vice grip years ago, it was gonna come in handy. I don't think it's gonna be as simple as I thought it was gonna be. But we're gonna fight through, we're gonna get it. 
after I get a drink. Well, I spared you the monotonous uh, video of me measuring this out and drawing it out, but I've got it all marked out on the liner here. I'm gonna take the skill saw and cut it out. I'm gonna leave myself a little ear here and I'm gonna drill a hole in it and I'm gonna use that to attach a chain to because what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna hook this up to my Ranger, hook a snatch block up into the trailer up there and then uh, just pull, try to pull it backwards and feed it up in there. And when I get it close, I'll just go ahead and cut this tab off and then I should be able to just shove it in the rest of the way with skid steer. So that's gonna be the plan anyways. Let's see how it goes. Um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna drill some pilot holes in the corner. They told me that, uh, or not pilot holes, some uh, uh, stop, uh, crack stop holes or stop drilling. I'm gonna stop drill the corners is what I'm gonna do um, because that's where the cracks and rips will always start, they said. So I'm gonna punch a couple holes in the corners and uh, just so it's got a nice round edge so it doesn't have a, a sharp edge to start cracking or ripping off of. So we'll do that first and then we'll get cutting. Okay, now I'm gonna use a skid steer to, to pull the end gate up for me. And uh, I'll end up put it, trying to find a place to uh, hook up a snatch block up there. Get the Ranger over here and uh, try to get enough chain or whatever, see if the winch cable's long enough. And we'll try to suck that sucker up in there. So I have a snatch block, I just like saying that, um, right here, a winch block that I could use. However, the problem is I don't think I have a long enough cable to run me 36 feet plus 36 feet. Um, so I can either use this and maybe grab some nylon rope that I have and try to get that to run through this, or I can just use a clevet or a uh clevis and just run through chain run chain through it and hope the chain slips through it i've got the uh chain hooked up through there um it's uh hooked into those holes way up front there it's kind of hard to see from here i know it's hooked into two holes right up next to the uh, doghouse up there so it should be pretty sturdy uh i'm gonna i'm gonna see how much nylon rope i got here and if that works, great. If not, I'm just going to use a clevis and run chain through it. Well, I have plenty of nylon rope. I hope this is strong enough. We'll find out, I guess. Luckily, I had broken this chain before and I had put that little... Uh, I don't remember what they're called. Anyway, so, snatch box in. Um, Go through the holes there, right next to Doggo, so it should have plenty of support there. I'll go ahead and run my rope through it. Sorry about the camera angle there. Run it back. Okay, so that's where I'm at. That's how much rope I got. So, I can tie chains to each end, give me some more length, and that way I can, what I can do is, when I pull up for it far enough, when I pull the, uh, uh liner up far enough i can just go ahead and reset the chains and then run the rope back and and kind of go from there so that's probably what i'm going to do i wasn't a boy scout though so i got to try to figure out how to tie a nice knot i'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me how to do it and how i screwed it up but 
I'm gonna try to figure it out. Come on. Change of plans. That rope wasn't enough. I might have the tool though. <sighs> this stuff out of the way. One of these days I'll clean this up. Clean it up once a year and about two weeks later it's dirty again. doesn't work. Well, that actually worked really well. I was kind of upset because I had to go buy carpet for a bedroom and I had to stop working. But on the way in, I thought, you know, I have this little mini X and I bet you that thing would be pretty strong and could push this stuff around pretty well. It shoved it right in there, just about perfect. Um, I'm going to uh, get my final cut down in there. And it looks like I'm probably gonna have to do some trimming back here. I think they cut me a little long, so I want to make sure I get that done. And then uh, I'll probably have to pull it out to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna eat a little supper here, and then I'm gonna jump in and make those final cuts and call it for call it a night. Okay, so <clears throat> I still have to cut this chunk out here, this right there on the line. Um, that's no big deal. What I didn't account for though <clears throat> is this curve on the front. For some reason, I wasn't even thinking about that. So what I need to do is figure that curve out. And I think I can do that just by going under the trailer, drawing it out, and uh, then tracing it out onto this. You know, I'm basically just gonna have to cut this back here like this, 
um, back to here somewhere ish. Um, the problem is how am I going to do that now that it's in here? Um, I might need to use like one of those little reciprocating or not reciprocating those little vibrating saws, whatever they're called. Um, see if that cuts it. If not, I might have to pull the whole liner out to do that. Um, so that might be kind of a pain in the rear, but, uh, everything else went in really good. Um, I was struggling. I thought I was going to winch it up in there and, and have to do that. That rope did nothing. Um, that mini X worked awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. So, um, this thing fits perfect. The scores are in the perfect spot. It fits right down onto the floor. It fits down right below my, my screw holes where my, my, uh, uh, the overlaps go. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, this thing fits awesome. I'm super happy with it so far. Um, we're probably still going to have to trim off the back a little bit though. So what I should do is I should make those, find those measurements, get the fronts cut, get this thing snugged up tight. That's going to be too much for me to do tonight. So that's going to be another job for tomorrow. So I think we're going to call it a night. Um, and, uh, try to hit it tomorrow. Okay. So it's, uh, the next morning, um, weather's moving in. So. I need to get this corner cut so I can get this shoved all the way in. Then I can back it into the shop where it's going to be warm and dry. And I can work on putting all the hardware in to get it all attached. But I need to get this corner cut out so I can shove it all the way in so I can shut the gate and uh, get all that stuff done that I need equipment for. So I'm going to bust this out real quick and then uh, uh, shove it in with the little mini axe or the skid steer and then uh, get her in the shop. back edge is just about perfect I might have to trim a little bit from right here to here uh, we got a little wild back here I guess a little further back than I thought but that's not gonna be a big deal yeah I think we're good I'll take it what I should do is I should get a little bit of thinner stuff and just make some skirts here. But this will be good. I'm happy. Let's get her in the shop and get her bolted in. Okay, so the liner is physically in the truck. It's physically cut. Everything's spaced. All I got to do now is uh, put my fasteners in. <coughs> it's normally fastened up around the doghouse here and everything like that. Since there was a liner in this before, there's already holes drilled in the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up underneath. And I'm going to drill up through the liner. That way I'm not drilling more, ho more, uh, more holes into the floors than, than I need to uh, in the, uh, the truck here. So, yeah, I'm super stoked. I'm super happy right now. This thing fits awesome. So let's get these machines shut down and the truck backed into the shop and we'll get to the rest of it here.
okay as i said before this thing had a liner in it before so it was bolted in here around the dog house you can see all the bolt holes here around the dog house and then down this uh down between these two rungs so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these same holes and i'm going to use those to attach the the liner in there that way i don't drill more holes in the tub and i mean nobody needs more holes in here than you really have to so um that's uh what i'm gonna do so i gotta run into town and get some stainless hardware because i don't want those to rust out so uh, we'll do that and plus i broke a couple of these these are all stainless too so i want to be able to get a few more pieces of stainless i gotta get a couple tubes of silicone um so i can seal up those uh cover straps and uh yeah i don't have enough silicone to do that here right now so yeah we're on our way Okay, so I got all my hardware. Um, I didn't end up getting this stainless hardware because I wasn't gonna spend $5 a bolt to do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I do, and I did forget, I do need to pick up a few quarter inch stainless bolts for these cover straps because I don't want those, I don't want regular bolts to rust and leave streaks down the side of the trailer. So I do need to pick those up. I should have picked them up, I didn't. But anyways, I can leave, I think I broke like three of them. So I can leave those three out and just fill those in later. But, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cover straps on first to make sure those are on and tight. And then I'm gonna drill my holes in the floor and put my floor bolts in. Um, because I don't wanna put my floor bolts in then all of a sudden realize my cover straps aren't gonna fit. And then I end up drilling more holes, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna put the cover straps in, do the floor bolts, liner will be done. Um, I did get my, uh, uh, I'm motion with my hands a lot, don't I? Um, I did get my uh, dump valve for the trailer. So as soon as I get that put in and get these uh, pieces made for the top, this trailer is done and ready to go. I guess other than getting it DOT, but it should pass DOT pretty easy, I think. Um, this thing should be ready to go. So uh, I'm gonna finish this up, then I can get back to the cab over, which I know everybody wants. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. So most of these cover straps are held on by quarter inch bolts that go through, but uh, in the ribs of the trailer, um, there's some uh, just right, uh, self-drilling screws that hold them in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the uh, uh, silicone on, on here to seal them in good. And I'm just gonna put those self-drilling screws in first. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna try to see what I can do to get the, uh, the other bolts in as well. Hmm. Now that I say this out loud, this sounds like a bad idea because by the time I actually get somebody to help me, that silicone's gonna set up and it's not gonna really, it's gonna be all ripply. Damn it. Well, I tried putting one on and I don't like this big gap here. Um, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather suck that in with some bolts. So I'm gonna wait till somebody's here to help me with it. I suppose I could temporarily put this one on and just put it in there temporarily with no silicone and still get these floors bolted in that would probably work i guess i'll i guess i'll do that uh, it's not one thing it's another well then i got the front two straps uh just temporarily bolted in um they fit fine i'm not worried about um the this thing moving around a lot or anything like that so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna crawl into the trailer drill the holes that i need to drill drop those bolts in and get these bolted in um, and then I'll wait until I got somebody here with me that can uh, hold the back of the uh, those nuts on those cover straps or the bolts on it and run those in for me. What a pain in the butt.
Well, I need about five, six more nuts to uh, finish this job. I knew I should have grabbed some. Uh, anyways, uh, like I said, I got to go grab a couple stainless uh, quarter inches anyways to uh, um, finish this off. I'll show you what I got going on with that check valve and you'll kind of understand why I probably need to change it. So I was, when I first uh, plumbed this whole thing up, dump, dump valve worked great. I never gave it a second thought and uh, it worked great on the switch. The minute I hooked it up to the truck, nothing was working. So I thought I had something screwed up and uh, in my plumbing and everything. Well, that really wasn't the case. And, and I started looking under here at the dump valve, which is right there. And as you can see, it's literally <laughs> half eaten away. So um, I gotta pull that out and uh, put a new one in. So I might do that here real quick before I run into town. Um, or I might go take a nap because it's my day off and I'm just kind of being lazy. So anyways, um, I don't know if that's going to be the end of this uh, video for the day. Uh, it might because I kind of feel real comfortable laying here on the creeper. So um, uh, yeah, appreciate you watching. I might finish up this video finishing up the trailer. I might not. I might just get the peat in here. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, leave some comments, all that jazz you hear on every single YouTube video from everybody else. You're going to hear it from me too, so thanks for watching those guys. God bless. See ya.